Joshua chapter 1. I thought it was Deuteronomy. No, Joshua. I said that Joshua is after the oh, book of sorry. Deuteronomy. Joshua chapter 1. We're going to look at verse 6, 7, and 9. This is our scripture verse I would like to start ourselves with this morning. So let me, let, let me preface, and for, mm -hmm. for some of you that do not know the Bible, the way of our kingdom, um, so I ask those that know the Bible to bear with me a few minutes as we, as we try to get everybody into the same, um, let's call it stage or same area of awareness, amen, and insight. So Joshua has just inherited the Israelite nation that he, he has watched the legendary commander Moses, the legendary general Moses that God called when he was 80 years old, lead the Israelites for 40 years until he's 120 and then Moses died. So Moses had just died and Joshua has now became the new leader, he's Moses' protege, amen, to take on this nation of over a million people to lead them, amen, for God now as they go forward into the future. And he's leading these people into a new land, a place they haven't been before. Amen? So he's just become the new commander of, uh, of, the, of the nation of, of Israel and God's, amen, command the God's general to guide them. And as he come into this position, amen, God's going to have a chat with him before he go forth to do this task. God want to make sure he's up to the task or understand the magnitude or the gravity of what he stepped into or what, what is expected of him, amen, and, and, and for him to understand how much God is going to support him, amen, amen, and, and make sure that he succeed in all of the challenge and the interplay ahead of time. So in the first chapter, soon as he gets his command post, the Lord will speak to him. Amen? So we're going to pick it up. It's a wonderful chapter. If you get some time, you should read. But, you know, but for the sake of time, I only can read a few verses in this particular area because our subject today greatly amen, flows around this area. And the Lord is speaking to Joshua after he put him into his new post. And the Lord said this from verse 5. I mean, I mean from verse 6. You know, we got it from... Um, um, Verse 6 and 7. Actually, actually, maybe I should pick up from verse 5 so you got a little bit of background. Let's pick up from verse 5. Amen. So the Lord said to Joshua, No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. Amen. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not fail you or forsake you. When the Lord calls you into a position, into a time, into a task, into an assignment, He's planning to be with you that nothing that come against you will be able to what? Withstand you. Because God, if they can withstand you, they can withstand me. And because I'm omnipotent, no one can what? Withstand me. So He said, as I was with Moses, this is why He said, we stand in Isaiah 33, amen, verse 2, we got heaven want to be with us. And we need heaven to be with us. We can't pass through this life. We didn't create this life. We didn't create ourselves. We didn't create the situation, the circumstance, the condition. God is the one who do. So because he is the one that do it, he is the most suitable and adequate to navigate you through. Amen? Never forget this. The person, Jesus tells his disciple this. No disciple is greater than what? His teacher. No slave, he said, is greater than his master. No created thing is greater than the, the one that what? Created. I don't care how much you think you are, how special or unique or talented, you are not greater than the one that what? Created you. Amen? So God said, the reason Moses was 80 years when I called him, but for 40 years he can be such an excellent commander was because what? I was with him. I never forsake him. And the reason you are going to be exceptional in your office, Joshua, is because I will be with you the same way I was with Moses. 
We thank God, we in the church sometimes, you know. The old church probably goes, why are you always going to church and why are you always praising? We have to praise the one who never, who called us first of all. Forgive us and call us. Amen. And equipped us to do his will. And never leave us and forsake us. You know, sometimes, and I, just in case this, you have heard this, this is not correct. Sometimes this goes around with a popular teaching, but it's incorrect. It's not truth. Amen. It is not the truth. That because you are a Christian or you have been regenerated or you are saved, you will not go through challenges. Well, because Joshua become the commander, amen, of the Israelites and he has to go into a new land, he will not be challenged. If not, God will need to give him the next instruction you see I'm about to read. That's not true. The challenge fall on what? The unchurch and the church. The rain fall on what? The just and the unjust. There are cloudy days that, amen, falls upon what? The Christian and the... There are rainy days that fall on the Christian and the non-Christian. The sun shines on the Christian and the non The pandemic falls upon the Christian and the non-Christian. The only difference is one of them have federal support. The only difference is one of them have heavenly support. God never said he's not going to let this thing fall. He said, the child, the difference is I'm with you. And because of who I am, what makes me God, that is a non-issue. You got to care what that, those things are doing. You have me. I am your portion. You know, when God was distributing different gifts to the 12 tribes of Israel, the Levitical tribe was not allowed to get anything. No portion except some little land to live in. Ego because their portion was what? God. Him. Ego went out with them. What can be against them? What can oppose them in whatsoever they'll face? Amen? You see, you can get a gift or something and a situation can be what? A greater magnitude, bigger than it, stronger than it, faster than it. But nothing is bigger than stronger than God. So if you have the, ever have the choice between getting something and getting God, I'm telling you, get God. Get the source. You will be more than capable to deal with everything. So Joshua in his inherited post or assignment, God said the same way I was with Moses, I'm going to be with you. Now God said, because I'm with you the way I was with Moses, I want you, I'm expecting some things mm -hmm. of you. Let's look at these things. God went on to turn to him and say, I won't forsake you, verse 6. He said, be strong, Joshua, confident, and of good courage. Amen? For you shall cause this people to inherit the land which I swore, amen, to their fathers to give to them. He said, I need you to be strong, and I need you to have courage, because through you, these Israelites, these people, are going to inherit their what? Their inheritance. There are some of you God has called to be strong and into certain and to have courage in certain positions. Because you want to help your family, you want to help your community, you want to help these people, this nation, this generation, cross over, get into a position. Amen? You see, one of the things sometimes we like to do, we think God wants you to be strong and courageous for you. Amen. If there are going to be any acolytes or any accreditation or anybody going to be extraordinary and accredited for it, it isn't because you keep your strength or your gift or your talent to you, but it's because you use it to aid what? Someone or something. Amen. You serve your gifts, your talent, your office, your post, and God wants you to do it in a strong and courageous way. In a few minutes, we're going to look at the word courage. We're going to look at the root word courage. So God tells Joshua, and as I said, in one chapter, three times, you repeat this word. I need you to be strong and courageous. I need you to be strong and courageous. Remember, I'm with you. Verse 7. Only, he said, amen, for these people to inherit what I promised their forefathers to give to them, only you be strong and very what? Courageous. I need you, as we go through this process, because the challenge ahead of you are so challenging, the people, the terrain, the opposition, the conditions, I need you to be strong and courageous. Because you have the strongest force with you. Amen? Which is me. He said, for these people to inherit what I promise, only you be strong and very courageous. That you may do according to all, amen, the laws which Moses, my servant, command you. Turn not from it, amen, to the right and or to the left. That you may prosper, 
Amen? Wherever you go. He said, Joshua, I need you to be strong and courageous. I need you to be strong and courageous. I have a promise that I made to these people, forefathers, and I have choose you to help me carry out this promise. You're going to help them get their inheritance. I have a generation I'm ushering in. They shall do mighty exploit because they know their God. And I have raised up you, son, at such a time to help them inherit the promises. I want to restore health to this realms. I want to restore order. I want to restore success. I want to restore harmony, justice, right? And I've chose you to help do this. But I need you to be strong and courageous. Verse 8 is the book of the laws. He told them, do not make sure you meditate. You get very good at my laws. Verse 9, we're going to jump to. I told you I wanted to read 6, 7, and 9. He said, have I not command you? Listen, Joshua, have I given you direct order? Be strong, vigorous, and what? Very courageous. You notice he keeps that word, you go be strong. But every time you come to courage, you go, I need you to be very courageous. In the Old Testament, you will, find, you will find the word faith very much in the Old Testament. I think it's used twice, especially in a positive sense. And the only other time it's like in a negative sense. You won't use the word. Instead of the word faith, they have the word courage. Faith is tons and tons and tons in the New Testament. But in the Old Testament, you'll only find it in Deuteronomy chapter 32 and um, uh, Abakar chapter 3. And, and the Bible said, they have great faith with me. Amen. But instead of the, um, I know some theologians believe the reason why the word faith is not used a lot because um, we weren't in the time of grace, we were in the time of law, so like there was no need for it. But you'll find the word, um, I don't quite share that, 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 that um, concept, but that neither here or there right now. Um, the word courage is there instead of the word of faith. Okay. Amen. But once again, we see the Lord who, I need you to be very courageous. Be not afraid, amen, N neither be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. God said, because I am with you and I will not forsake you the same way I was with Moses, I need you to be strong. I need you to have courage. I have something I want to give to these people. It's very important. The Bible said, God's word is above his name. And he got, I give my word to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And what I give, I have to what? Bring to what? Fruition. There's no way around it. But you are the instrument. You are like my hands. The one I'm using to amen, usher this promise into manifestation. And as I, a strong force, forging it true, I need a strong instrument to see it true. I need you to be courageous. Courageous. The word courage comes from the Latin, the root word of it is Latin, the Latin word core or animal. A-N-I-M-O or C-O-R, core. It, it is the same word, the word core is the same word for, in Latin for art, amen, for our heart and for courage. The same word for your art, amen, and for courage, core. C O R. C O R. C O R. C O R. And that's, heart. That's why we that's, say uh, have heart. Yes. C core is uh, age three or Latin. Yes, we'll call it Latin. Amen. And I want to share um, something with you. Yeah. So, so the root word for courage or for heart in Latin, as I said. Is core and its original transformation mean to speak one's mind by telling all one's heart. <laughs> it is to speak, let your mind it may distribute everything that's in your heart. Or as the fourth lady said, tell your heart. So the original meaning of courage, amen, is to have heart. Have heart. Meaning have this, God, God had something in his heart. He goes, I made a promise to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, amen, that they'll inherit Canaan, amen, their, and, and their generation. And I've been carrying this promise into my heart, in, in, in my heart, to see it to fruition. So you go, Joshua, 
I need you to have art. I need you to have courage. I need you to carry this promise the way I'm carrying it, and I'm with you. Yeah. Amen? Until it is fulfilled. In essence, you'll find with God, you can't work with God unless you have heart on the task or the subject on the thing he's carrying. This is why God, God, God said this about um, David. This is a man after my own heart. This man carry in his heart the things of what? My heart. You will find you and God will not be able to go forward or work on a task if you have no heart. You don't care about the task you're supposed to be doing for him. Because God doesn't participate in tasks that he don't care about. Mm -hmm. He does not participate in tasks that he doesn't care about. And you will find you can't work with him unless you care about the task. So three times God tells Joshua, I need you to have hearts, very strong hearts. Amen? To see this promise I have made into completion. As long as you continue to have strong commitment, carry this thing in your heart, you go, I will be with you. He said, why you must have heart as I was with Moses, I am with you. But before Joshua can even get on the journey, he said, I need you to have core. I need you to have this thing in your heart. So the things you will express with your mind will be the things of what? Of your heart. Yeah. Core or animal. To use your mind to express everything in your heart. In the promise of the promised land. Right? Yes. Yeah. God said, I have made these people will, amen? Amen? Inherit. Inherit the promise that I promise. I have something in my heart. Now for all of God's creation and especially the church, God has a promise in his heart, amen, that he wants you to inherit. But it will require something of you. You have to have heart. You have to have courage to see the promise through. That when you go through the challenge and the hills and the valley and, and the good days and the bad days, he know you will not see it through. You will not get to see the promise he wants for your life come to pass, come to pass, to fruition, if you do not have what? Heart. Heart. You need to have courage. You need to have courage to see your dreams what? Through. You need to have courage to work with the federal government, to work with heaven. You need to have courage to get through this pandemic. You need to have courage to raise a family. Amen? You need to have courage to get through this life. You need to get courage, amen? Sometimes just to get up in the morning. And strong courage to see your dreams got a great opposing force. Amen? The word I'll be sharing with you, as I said, the scripture verse is Joshua. It's conviction. Another word for courage, you need to meet conviction. God goes to Joshua, I need you to be committed as I am committed. Amen? And now you're the commander of these people. Amen? So that they will inherit the promise. The message today is called convictions. Conviction. Sifu, if... We know that in the Old Testament, like you said, the main word instead of faith is courage. Um, and then in the New Testament, it, it's obviously the faith is used a million times. Mm -hmm. What's the distinction between that, that the, the old and the new usage of basically the same term? It's pretty much, you're pretty, you're pretty much you're right. Um, it's, it's pretty much the same term. The only different in the in this Old Testament, God goes, I am with you. Right. And I need you to be strong as I do in this. In the Old Testament, the only thing does faith draws Jesus to do it for you. Amen. Okay. Yes, the, the only you're dependent on um, in the Old Testament, you're kind of working in conjunction with God in this sense. God goes, There's some things I want you to do, you're gonna do it, but I'm gonna give you all the support. In the faith, Jesus is doing it for you. He's, he's going to do it. He said, depend on me, and he'll do it for you. He'll do it for you. Okay. Amen? Um, so, it's not so much courageous. Uh, uh, courageous deal a lot in your in You kind of participate some part in your activities. In the way of faith, it's not you are not doing it. 
it's all hell. That's a huge distinction. Yes, it's all hell. It's all hell. So, in in other words, God was depending on this one character trait. Yes. Whereas in the new, it's like he ain't depending on you other no, than uh, uh, you just willing to let him through. Yes. Yes. Right, right. yes you don't need to. No wonder it's the age of the law. Amen. Right? Amen. Yeah. Okay. You know that that's a crucial distinction. Amen. So, I'm speaking this morning on the subject. Amen. Conviction. I'm speaking from the standpoint this morning, conviction. Conviction. God wanted Joshua to be convicted before he embark on the task ahead of him. We're going to talk from the standpoint this morning, conviction. If you ever want to succeed at something, you need to get a conviction. Of course, you need the help of God. You need to have someone. It's one thing to have conviction, you don't have capability. But even with capability, Joshua had God already with him. But yet God still require and demand what? He said, after I command you, conviction. I need you to be committed to this task. I need you to have it. Let us even with your head. I need you to have it in your heart. I want to look at the depiction of conviction from the dictionary. I love the translation. Or the or, From the dictionary, a depiction of conviction, and in a sentence it said, conviction, the definition. A fix, a fix or form belief that no clever arguments, no persuasive fact or theory could make a dent in his conviction, in the rightness of his position. So conviction is when you take a position, and this position is so committed to, that no theory or argument or persuasiveness can move you off of the position. You are 100% committed. You are, the, your position is so fixated. I'm going to see how the kingdom of God look at this in a few minutes. God needed Joshua to be so committed that no self Doubt or self-talk or the opposing. When Moses was leading the Israelites, they were much challenged. Beside of the other tribes and the other you know, enemies that was attacking, right within his own community, there were eruptions. People trying to take over the leadership. People opposing the leadership. Without conviction, you will walk away. Look, why would I want to put up with this much crazy? Why, why? At one point, Moses was so tired of it. He got, did they come from my womb? Did they north off from my breast? Why do you have to deal with all this crazy? What do I deserve to, to, you know, to deal with all of this? Why are you bringing this to me? So much a lack of heart. <laughs> Without heart, you will not be able to go far. You will not be able... You, well, you might be able to go far when things are all nice and hunky dory and there's no major challenge. But you will not be able to go forward when the times are when we, or we say when the going get really tough. Mm -hmm. You need to meet conviction. So God addressed Joshua right off the bat before he gets too far into his assignment. There are many people something they're very excited about their assignment. But after a few months or weeks or years in, they don't want no part of it. And, you, and because of the challenges of the conviction of, 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 the, of the assignment. This will happen if you have not met conviction. You won't have the courage, meaning if you can't carry it in your heart. You know, you see this ever so often in the world. Someone starting a business or going out on a new you know, sure. um, adventure or something. And somebody goes, well, but I'll help you, you know, I'll be a partner. But I don't want to put no skins in the game. I don't want no investment. I don't want it to cost me nothing. I'll, I'll be a partner. You know, you know, but I don't want to put no skins in the game. Meaning, I don't want to have no commitment. I don't want it to, to cost me nothing. I don't want to have to carry it in my heart. I'm telling you, do not get into business, into enterprise with that person. Anyone who is not committed to invest their resource, to, you understand? They do not care about enough about it to carry it in the heart. They will easily, easily when the challenge or when the situation, if the situation is worked, it's solved, it will become challenging. It will become challenging. And when the pressure becomes hard, they will walk away. 
You have to have some skins in the game. So God go to Joshua, you're my new commander, but I need you to have courage, have courage, able to carry this promise in your heart as it is in what? My heart. You need to have skins in the game. As it is important and valuable to me, it has to be valuable to what? To you. This is what, one of the first things God does to his servants when he called them, amen? If not, you're not a shepherd, you need to have love. Meaning whatsoever the assignment is, he needs you to have what? Love for it. You need to be able to carry it in your what? Heart. Because you know what you're going to express must come from what? Your heart. Tell somebody the heart matters. The, the heart, heart matters. matters. Solomon understands it so well. He said above everything else, guard your heart. The heart matters. Let me simplify this for you. You will only able to do the things that you carry in your heart, that your heart care about. And you'll find God will only support the things that's in your heart that you care about. That's like the meeting place, like nothing outside of here. You don't care. So if you, as I say, you're about to start some new you know, venture or adventure, and you're getting involved with people, and they don't have a heart for it, amen? You see, when something, I'll teach you a secret, when something is in your heart, it keeps you up at night. It, it re-regulates the mind and reroutes the mind. When the mind is trying to wander here and wander there, this thing in your heart keeps coming up. You see? And reconstitute the mind, reformat it. Go, hey, we got to figure this out. We have to get this out. The heart matter. A bear will have its cub that he so love. Or you might see, you know, a, 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 a woman, she might be much to look at. Might only be about you know 80 pounds or 120 pounds, but she has two children, and she's one of the most peaceful and passive person. But you touch one of her children, you want to know if this is the same person. And she tall into all of a sudden she switched into a mauling beast. Perfect. I'm ready to tear you apart. The reason why she cares her children here Perfect. in her heart. She cares these dear loved ones to her. She is willing to give up what? Her life for them. Yep. She goes, when you threaten or you move upon my children, you move upon what's valuable to me. Perfect. And all of a sudden she changed into the, you're like, isn't this the most nice person I know? What happened? Perfect. So God tells Joshua, I need you to have this kind of commitment three times in the same chapter. Perfect. As I care about fulfilling my promise, I need you to care this promise in your heart. I always can tell. They're, they're, they're preachers and they're shepherds. The Israelites, the, the Pharisees were some of the greatest teachers you'll ever meet. In, in fact, Jesus said, unless you can get knowledge, like, like, you know, surpassing the Pharisee, they knew inside out, but they weren't shepherd. They don't care the people and things and God laws and principles in their heart. They're just like knowing it in their head. Some people like to know a lot of things, but they don't have a heart for it. They don't care if they win or they lose. In that matter. But God goes, I need, my people are extremely important. I need my shepherd to carry them in the heart. Jesus said, a good shepherd, when the wolf come, he lays down what? His life for the sheep. But the false shepherds, you run away. They don't mean anything to you. It's not in your heart. God, Jesus called those who are representing a task or a situation without heart hypocrites. You mean you're talking about it, you're interplaying, but you don't care about it. God know you will bail on the task and you will make him look bad, especially when you make a promise if you don't have what? Heart for it. But he know if you have heart for it, you will not bail when the going get what? Tough. You will have conviction that no persuasive theory or argument can move you off of the task. You need to have heart. You need to have some investment. Some skins is in the game. I encourage you when you're getting into the adventure, you know, new business and different things, and you're with a set of people, you need to find out if they have heart. And one of the, one of the ways, you know, is, is to see what they're prepared to lose for it or to put in for it. I believe the people that succeed the most in this world, especially in a, in, along the principle of righteousness, not by cheating other people, amen, are those, amen, who has heart 
who is so committed to this task, who's, this task or this dream keep them up at night. Every conversation, every circumstance, their mind is consistently rotating around it. I believe one of the reasons the mind wanders to no end of the world, you have lost contact with the heart. The Bible says your heart has become hard. You no longer can't remember what you care about. That is not anchoring you know, what you believe and what you think and what you act on. See, like a surface, like a leaf on the ground, you are blowing all over the place. The heart is supposed to anchor you how to move forward. You guys might know if, if you're kind of any kind of history buff, you might know the, the famous story of the Spanish conquest, um, um, Arnan Courts. Arnan Courts in the, in, 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 in the, in the 1500, 1519, um, um, he, he conquered after two years the Aztec Empire. And with 600 men, you, you, you know, um, um, the, 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 the Spanish conquest, um, when he approached the island, what he did, the, the ship that they came with, he burned the ship. And when he burned the ship, he got, the only way we can get off this island, we have to take over everything on the island, take over their ship. We, can, we have no way to retreat. So he got, if, you know, and, and, he, and he must have understood this, one of the most important things to human that they carry in their heart, the Bible said, no man hated his own flesh. Mm. It's, it's self-preservation, life. So when they realize they cannot, the only way to, to live, they have to defeat the enemy, Though they were greatly outnumbered after two years, amen, they, they, cap, they captured the Aztec Empire. It's because it means something to them. Their survival depends on it. You have to be invested, amen, in the, in the task, in, in, in the goal. You see? And if you want to have people strong and committed, God will not walk with Joshua unless he fully what? Invested. If you are not invested in these people, amen, and the promise I made to them as much as me, not, and you get the sentiment, I need you to carry this in your heart. I need you to have core that what you will talk about and how you'll go about and what you'll think about and what you'll dream about will be what? What's in your heart? What's in your heart? Amen. God told Samuel this, he go, you look on the outside, but I look at what? The heart. I want to know what's in that man or woman heart. Because from the heart, I know exactly what they'll do. Because this is the one who will dominantly amen, give them the power to do certain things. I want to show you the importance too of being able to navigate the heart path or working in conjunction. If you're going to succeed at anything significantly, I'm telling you, it needs to be in your heart. Meaning, you have to care about it. Not like...